Hi everyone. This is a compilation video of all of the animal jokes I've done over my career. I'm sure I forgot some. It does not include sea creatures or most of my dog jokes. We're best friends. Now put on this fireman's outfit. We're gonna do a photo shoot for Instagram. Cause I'm gonna do a dog compilation one because I have a lot of dog jokes too. If you enjoy it, please subscribe and thank you if you already have. And also turn on the alert button. I will continue to post a new video every day at 10 a.m. Eastern during the pandemic. Feel free to share with any of the animal lovers. Uh, that's my son, so I gotta go. Thanks. Pig rose, yeah. Pig rose, we always have that pig head sitting there, which is sad because you can tell they killed a pig when I was eating an apple. <laughs> Hey, pig, you want an apple? Sure, what are you doing with that spear? Ow! <laughs> Mid-bite, every time. At least those animals aren't alive, you know? I was feeling uncomfortable when I go in a seafood restaurant. They have that lobster tank sitting there. All the lobsters are peering out like, Hey, what are you here for? <laughs> uh, I'm here to eat you. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, Harvey, this guy. Harvey? <laughs> oh, and Harvey was gone. Don't get me wrong, I love animals. I just love to eat them more. <laughs> Fun to pet, better to chew. I do feel bad they have to be killed. You know, I'd prefer it was like an animal suicide. Maybe the animal deserved it. You know, this is a good chicken sandwich. I think this bastard tried to steal my car. <laughs> good work, Roger. Who's Roger? I love when I'm in big cities like Chicago and I see a policeman on a horse. For a second, I'm always like, did Canada invade? Would you, would you come from a time machine? You ever see the policeman on the horse? They always have that look like, why is everyone looking at me? Just done a two-ton animal in the middle of a highway. It's a big deal. You think that horse ever comes in handy? There's some robbery. You know, Cop, I'm gonna kill everyone. Oh, is that a pony? Huh, I love pony. Can I pet your pony? <laughs> a policeman on the horse. They probably rarely go undercover, huh? Can't really see them infiltrating the mafia. Hey, it's Finny the horse. Finny the horse. Why are you always on a horse? That was the worst Italian American impression I've ever heard. It's not just serial killers, there's bears out there. Last time I went, I got this pamphlet that said if a bear approaches, you're supposed to play dead. Really? We're gonna rely on my acting skills? <laughs> play dead? Who came up with that? Maybe the bears? <laughs> play dead, cover yourself in honey, climb on a large white plate. <laughs> Don't try to run away from us. I mean the bears. <laughs> How does that even work? There's a bear. Uh, uh, uh. I uh, hope the bear thinks we die standing up. As if bears have some ethical code. I don't mess with dead bodies. I'm a bear, not an animal. That was the worst impression of a bear ever. Play dead. I'm not saying that strategy didn't work once, but when they find a body that's been mauled by a bear, how do they know that guy wasn't playing dead? Maybe he was the best at it. And the bear was like, great performance, but I'm starving. And he looks like a burrito. <laughs> Why are we even camping where there's wild animals? That wouldn't be a selling point for anything else. Oh, it's a beautiful golf course. Plus, around the ninth hole, there's a pack of wolves. <laughs> if they start running at you, just play through. <laughs> the pig is an amazing animal. You feed a pig an apple, it makes bacon. I find that impressive. Let's see Michael Phelps do that, huh? The pig, the pig is turning an apple, essentially garbage, into bacon. That's magic or the most successful recycling program ever. Really, the pig is man's best friend. I love dogs, but pigs would be good companions and then when they die, you could have a barbecue. Sorry your pig died. Can I come over for breakfast? <laughs> and have some bacon? Am I the only one that doesn't feel comfortable with the fact stuffing is cooked inside a dead animal? 
Shove a loaf of bread up there. Mmm, delicious. <laughs> kind of a humiliating way to go out for the turkey. You're gonna kill me? Oh, it's gonna get a lot worse. <laughs> you do not want to know. <laughs> you ever catch yourself smelling? You're like, oh my God, I gotta smell that again. <laughs> you're like drawn to it. You're like, that is alluring. <laughs> Honey, get over here. I got a treat for you. But we smell because we're animals, right? We're just self-cleaning animals. We're like cats. We're like, ah. I know we're supposed to be like apes, but they're picking bugs off each other and eating it. We're like cats. We self-clean. We're grumpy. We're finicky eaters. I don't want to eat that. <laughs> I don't feel like eating that right now. We like to think we're like dogs. I mean, I wish I was a dog. Dogs are always in a good mood. They're like, what is that? Throw up? I'll eat it. <laughs> I don't care. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> dogs are happy to be anywhere. <laughs> you ever see a homeless guy with a dog? The dog's like, this isn't that bad. <laughs> I was begging for food anyway, I mean. <laughs> but we're more like cats, right? But we can't even be like a cat, because a cat could scratch itself on a stationary object, and we'd be like, that's adorable. <laughs> but if I scratch myself on a mannequin, at Victoria's Secret. <laughs> they call security. If I'm just like, oh, I got an itch here. <laughs> Especially if I'm purring, if I'm like, lots of honeys around here, huh? But I love Asian food. I love uh, Kobe beef. I know I look like a vegetarian, but I'm not. <laughs> Kobe beef, if you're not familiar with that, that comes from cows that are fed beer and massaged with sake. And I heard that, and I was like, I want to be Kobe Beef. <laughs> Where do I sign up for? Those are some happy cows. They have no idea they're on death row. They're like, it's a lie. <laughs> Woo, a little lower, a little lower, honey. <laughs> Why the hell this cow go for another beer? <laughs> you Japanese love design. That sake bottle actually looks like a hatchet. Ow. It's just a drunk cow, and it's appealing, which means it's only a matter of time. <gasps> you have to try this chicken who was raised solely on Doritos. <laughs> what kind? Cool ranch. <laughs> but really, Kobe beef shows you how decadent we've become, right? Now it's not enough that we live a life of luxury. Now we need to eat things that have lived a life of luxury. <laughs> I understand this cow had a good life, but did it go to private school? <laughs> I only eat cows who went to private school. <laughs> it did. Do you have anything on your menu that owned a boat? <laughs> Kobe beef, it's an interesting idea, right? It must have been a surprise for someone along the way. It's like, you like that steak? This is the best steak I've ever had in my life. You know, I fed that cow some beers. <laughs> you got the cow drunk? Yeah, and then I was massaging it. Uh? <laughs> Why? Why were you massaging an animal you gave a lot of alcohol to? <laughs> so you could enjoy it. So I could enjoy it? I, I'm not hungry anymore. I'm gonna go call Special Victims Unit. Let's see what Olivia Benson thinks of this. We don't like to think about what we're eating. Buffalo wings, chicken wings. I'm sure you savages eat those. Those are baby chicken's wings that you're eating. I don't eat those, I eat the chicken legs. <laughs> I would never take away a bird's ability to fly. <laughs> Some people are like, oh, chickens can't fly. How do we know? They've become too dependent on those legs. <laughs> legs are making birds lazy. You ever see footage of a hippo crossing a river? There's always a bird sitting on its back. <laughs> How lazy is that bird? It's gonna take the hippo 10 minutes to get across that river. That bird could glide across. That bird, I wanna eat their legs. Mostly because I'm pro-hippo. <laughs> I love animals, and I love animal lovers. My favorite are the people that carry around the dog in a bag. Whenever I see that, I always think, what an adorable way to let us know you're crazy. Because <laughs> they're crazy. They're carrying around an animal that can walk in a bag. They're not going to the vet, they're shopping. 
that's okay, but if I carry around a canned ham, I'm a weirdo. <laughs> It'd be one thing if the dog looked happy, but the dog always has a look on his face like, can you believe I'm sitting in a purse? <laughs> I was part of Mexican royalty. <laughs> but I get it, I love dogs, and I think it's cute when people dress their dogs up, but how do you have your dog in a jacket and walk by a homeless person? Sorry, I'd help, but I spent all my money on a coat for my animal that's born with a coat. <laughs> I love cats. Some people don't like cats. Our neighbor has a cat, and she lives in a studio apartment, or as I refer to it, a litter box. <laughs> One time she asked me, she was like, can you even tell I have a cat? And I was like, no, but I can tell you have a box of turds in your apartment. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the same question. We all have the friend with the cat, right? In the small place, you visit them, the cat does their business. You don't really acknowledge it. You just go on with the conversation. What do you want on your pizza? Bleach. <laughs> Febreze, can we open a window or knock down a wall? Are my eyes bleeding? How about we throw a diaper on the kitty? <laughs> but I get it, because I love animals. I think being around animals, there's a healing quality. But I also think we give animals too much credit. Like a dog is man's best friend. I've never seen a dog help someone move. <laughs> yes, horses are graceful and elegant until you see them poop standing up. <laughs> Dolphins are smart. Learn English like Jesus did. <laughs> For the record, I would never eat a dolphin because I don't like fish. And I know I'll get tweets where people will say, dolphins are mammals, and those are the people I block. Because <laughs> that's how I deal with criticism. <laughs> I was released from the hospital the day after the surgery. They gave me painkillers. They also instructed me to do some walking, which I assume was part of the recovery, but it kind of felt like a commentary on my weight. <laughs> Have you ever done any walking? <laughs> Have you ever leaned forward and let your legs propel your fat ass? <laughs> Let's take a break from your motorized scooter. <laughs> and I was in Alaska, so I thought this was perfect. So I returned to my family, and we immediately went on a hike. And it was great. Alaska's beautiful. My kids were having fun. I was pretending like I enjoyed being outside. <laughs> and then suddenly we saw a bear, like 500 yards away, this huge brown bear, like way bigger than a gummy bear. And I was so excited, because I watch nature shows, but I had never seen a bear in person. So it felt like a celebrity sighting. I was like, oh my God, I've watched you on Animal Planet. <laughs> it's so much taller in person. Can we do a selfie? <laughs> but unlike a celebrity sighting, there was the risk of death. <laughs> like you never hear, we're in a restaurant, Tom Hanks walked in, and then he came over and murdered my family. <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> but the bear was far away. So I took out my phone and I started taking pictures. And then suddenly the bear stood up, roared, and looked right at me. <laughs> started creeping towards me, tilting his head back and forth, almost like he recognized me. So, that guy looks like Philip Seymour Hoffman. <laughs> I, was like, I was terrified. <laughs> Luckily, we were with a tour guide, and I looked at him, and he goes, don't worry, I have bear spray. And I was like, do you have anything stronger? <laughs> like a bear gun? Because I don't think this bear's approaching to get his hair done. <laughs> and the bear kept coming, kept coming. And then suddenly, the tour guide goes, okay, I want everyone to start walking backwards slowly. Walk backwards slowly. I guess so the bear could catch up. <laughs> So we started walking backwards slowly. By then, the bear was in a full sprint. I had surgery 12 hours ago, so I smelled delicious. I was also sunburned, so I probably looked like a giant land salmon. The bear couldn't believe his luck. Like, I'm not gonna have to eat for a month. I was like, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna be eaten by a bear. Which is ironic, given how many animals I've eaten. So I started humming Circle of Life and continued walking backwards slowly. I should point out, it's not like we were walking backwards slowly to a car or a cabin. We were walking backwards slowly to nothing. 
it probably looked like we were teasing the bear, like, come and get it, Mr. Bear. <laughs> you looking to get a little grizzly? <laughs> Craving a little 2XL, are you? <laughs> and before you knew it, the bear was upon us, and he killed us, and we died. <laughs> Such a bloody mess. No, what really happened is at one point, the tour guy pulled out this thing. It looked like a pen. I was like, great, he's going to ask for the bear's autograph. <laughs> And I learned later on it was a bear flare and he squeezed it and this tiny fireball went out towards the bear and I was like, oh good, something to anger the bear. <laughs> but the fireball bounced off the bear, the bear stopped and then just ran the other way like it forgot something at home. <laughs> and we all looked at each other like, oh my gosh, that just happened, that just happened. And that's a true story. Well, most of that's true. <laughs> well, it's all true except there was no bear. <laughs> uh, no, no the, there was a bear. <laughs> but I get it, I love dogs too, I love animals. We all have the friend that announces they love animals in a way that implies the rest of us are drowning kittens. <laughs> yeah, but I love animals. <laughs> Well, that's a pretty exclusive group of just you and anyone who's not a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, but I just get along with animals better. Or humans don't like you. <laughs> I did have an opportunity uh, to go on a safari, which was unbelievable. It was breathtaking how bad the Wi-Fi was. <laughs> yeah. I went on a safari, which is just a fancy word for animal stalking. Because that's what you do on a safari. You follow animals and watch them. You're like... <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> it's a good thing these animals can't report us to the police. <laughs> yeah, officer, that fat guy in the untucked shirt followed me for an hour this morning. <laughs> I woke up and he was taking pictures of me and my family. <laughs> we were naked. <laughs> yeah, the guy who looks like Philip Seymour Hoffman. <laughs> On the safari, I saw one animal kill another animal and intellectually, I was like, I don't want to see that. But emotionally, in the moment, I was like, get him. <laughs> get your leg! <laughs> my kids were totally savage about it. They're like, hey! My kids were with me. My kids were poorly behaved on a safari. <laughs> They're six and seven, and animals would walk by like, savages. <laughs> we are a country that loves to bet on horses. Every spring we track the three races of the Triple Crown, and every spring I always have the same thought. We're still doing this? <laughs> Is Woodrow Wilson president? <laughs> But people love the Triple Crown, the Kentucky Derby, where people bet on horses while they're dressed like characters from Gone with the Wind. <laughs> it's like prom for gamblers. <laughs> Do you like my hat? I'm living in my sister's garage. Because <laughs> I have a debilitating gambling addiction. <laughs> Shall we have another mint julep? It was announced the winner of each race on the news. You can always tell the horse was named by a guy on his eighth wife. The horse is always named like, Viagra's Revenge. <laughs> Alimony be damned. <laughs> they show a picture of the winning horse on the news. They could show us a picture of any horse. We wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> I don't know what we're supposed to do with that horse image. It's not like we're gonna run into that horse in a bar. <laughs> Excuse me, did you win the Kentucky Derby? <laughs> I did, I won the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> now I'm in a bar enjoying a Heffenweizen. <laughs> there is the classic photo of the winning horse, right? They're, they're always wearing that huge horseshoe wreath of flowers they stole from someone's gravesite. <laughs> Standing next to the winning horse is the owner of the horse who did not train the horse, did not ride the horse, and based on body language, has never really met the horse. <laughs> There the owner stands, looking like they've never paid taxes. <laughs> Sitting on top of the winning horse is the jockey who's dressed like he just came from a local pride parade. 
They always interview the jockey expecting some insight. They're like, how'd you win? The jockey's like, I whipped the horse and it ran. Very rare for a horse to win all three races of the Triple Crown, mainly because they're horses and they don't care. <laughs> Mostly they just want someone to stop whipping them. Because they're horses. I didn't know this. After the Triple Crown, all those horses retire. They retire at the age of three, which feels early. <laughs> they retire and then they're sent out to stud. Those horses get paid to have sex which in some ways is better than winning the triple crown. <laughs> That's like the quadruple crown. That's gotta be an adjustment for those horses. Like, hey, remember when we whipped you and we wanted you to run? Well, now when we whip you, we're gonna have you do something a little different. <laughs> How many horse jokes is this guy gonna do? I never thought I'd miss a murder joke. There's a lot more horse jokes. And if you haven't noticed, I know nothing about horses. <laughs> I don't horseback ride, mainly because I prefer to be comfortable, and it's not the 1800s. I'm sure the horses aren't thrilled either. They're like, why am I carrying you around? I saw you drive up in a Honda Civic. <laughs> but people like the horseback ride. I have a friend, she told me the reason she enjoys horseback riding is because she loves horses which seems like a strange way of expressing love for something. <laughs> Making it carry you around on its back. I mean, I love my great aunt Katie. <laughs> I'm not gonna make her carry me around on her back. <laughs> not anymore, yeah? <laughs> I don't even know why we have to specify that it's horse back riding. <laughs> Other people are like, hey, you wanna ride a horse? What part? <laughs> The, the part that looks like a seat, the back. <laughs> oh, good, because I've done horse ass riding. <laughs> that was painful, I kept falling off. <laughs> I should probably tell you, the rest of the show is all horse jokes. <laughs> is he serious? <laughs> there are different types of horses. He's gonna keep going, isn't he? <laughs> no, there are breeds of horses, right? Which is different from horse breeding. I don't know if you've ever seen two horses breed, but that'll keep you awake at night. <laughs> if you've never seen two horses breed, do not YouTube it. <laughs> do not YouTube it and print out still images. Don't do that. <laughs> don't affix your face on one of the images and show your wife think it's funny. She won't think it's funny. <laughs> but that says more about her than you. What was I talking about? Horses? <laughs> it's strange how we treat horses. We give horses shoes. I don't even know if horses need shoes. You never see a horse in the wild walking around like, ow, ow. <laughs> Wish I had some damn shoes. <laughs> we give horses shoes that are metal. Metal? That's worse than Crocs. That must be hard to shop for, right? Do you have anything in metal, but not a slip on, something I could nail to my foot? <laughs> that's what we do, we nail it to their foot! <laughs> and when we're not doing that, we're literally tossing the horseshoe around as a game. <laughs> the horse must be like, what the hell are you doing with my shoes? <laughs> Probably looks like we're taunting the horse. Hey horse, why don't you come and get your shoes? <laughs> Go and grab it all you can, because you don't have hands! <laughs> the horseshoe, a symbol of luck for everyone but the horse. <laughs> I don't know if this is true. Someone told me that when horses are sent out to stud, some female horses will wear high heel horseshoes. <laughs> Makes them more confident. I'm gonna be paying for this later on, huh? <laughs> oh, and I've been on my feet all day. That's gotta be the end of the horse jokes. Horse people, and I'm not talking about people that are half horse, half human, which are centaurs and they don't exist anymore, right? No, people who own horses will tell you that the horse can't even feel the nail going in their foot. Not that anyone's ever heard a horse go, that's fine, hammer away. <laughs> Next time, glue, just don't tell me where you got the glue from.
Oh, that was too edgy? There's no horses in here. There's not a horse in the front row going, hey, take it easy on the glue, Joe. I'm gonna need I love how some of you look forward. Is there a horse up there? It's strange how we treat horses, you know? The most shocking way we treat horses is when they break their leg, we shoot them. That's a harsh medical plan. And someone explained the reason they shoot horses when they break their leg is because it's unlikely the leg will heal properly. And I was like, unlikely? So there's a chance? Can you imagine how stressed out horses must be? Like I stepped on a branch. It was a branch, put down the gun. Look at the branch, it's a branch. Even if they're injured, they're like, I'll walk it off. I'm gonna walk it off. Put the gun down. Jeez, you guys, anyone? Uh, you ever heard of Ben Gay? What's going on? Put down the... I can see on some of your faces that you would frankly prefer if I did more horse jokes. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's odd how we treat horses, because we live in this era where we treat our dogs and cats as family members. People are always trying to get their dog on an airplane. You know it's just a matter of time before someone brings a horse on a plane. <laughs> are you kidding me? This is my therapy horse. <laughs> it keeps me calm on the flight. Oh, we'd like to welcome our silver medallion members to board. <laughs> and anyone traveling with a farm animal, <laughs> you can board at gate 47. Don't Feel free to grab some sugar cubes that we <laughs> Horsepower. Uh, horsepower is so different from girl power. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you go, horse. Hey, hey, is, is what horses eat. Okay, I can tell at this point there's probably one or two or 300 of you that are frankly annoyed by the horse jokes. <laughs> and I want you to know that your annoyance uh, gives me pleasure. <laughs> All right, you know what? That's, that's no more horse jokes, I promise. I promise. All right? Anyway, um... Ponies are completely different. Here's the problem with doing roughly 10 minutes of horse jokes, besides the audience hating you for the rest of their lives, is for the next couple minutes, you will all be like, is there a horse joke coming? Or you're gonna be like, he could have put a horse joke in there. He didn't use the reference giddy up, why wouldn't he put it in there? but I want you to put the horse jokes aside. Put them in a barn. And I'm gonna talk about something else. Maybe. I saw a moose, have you seen him? I saw a moose in person. I mean, or in moose. I, I'm a person who saw a moose. And I tell you, I don't, I don't feel like I was ready. I don't know how big I thought a moose was going to be, but I was way off. <laughs> I, was, I was way off. I was, it was huge. And I feel like I should have been warned. Like someone should have been like, you might see a moose, get ready. <laughs> but my friend was like, you might see a moose, have fun. Like it was a butterfly or something. <laughs> Hopefully you'll see a moose. So I was like in shock when I saw it. I was like, wow, whoa. Uh, are they shooting a Star Wars movie up here? <laughs> How many people are in that moose costume? <laughs> At least three. It was huge. It was the size of like a transformer. It was gigantic. And then my friend was like, don't get close, it'll kill you. <laughs> what? At that moment, I realized my moose knowledge didn't exist. I knew nothing about moose. 
Like, my moose knowledge it comes from cartoons. In cartoons, moose are like, hey, how you doing? But in real life, they're like, I'm gonna kill you! How, how did that translate? Never hear moose in those animal songs, right? The cow goes moo, the cat goes meow, the moose goes, I'm gonna stomp you to death. <laughs> Did you know that the plural of moose is reginas? <laughs> that surprised me. I wasn't ready for that. It's almost like you guys forgot you could eat cows, you know? No, you eat the pig, you fight the cow. Ole. <laughs> right? Ole. Ole. Spanish bullfighting, very, very controversial, right? I've only seen clips on YouTube. And from what I can tell, at the beginning, it looks more like bull avoiding. It's like, ooh, ooh, ooh miss me again. Is that how the Spanish fight? They're like, you want to go, bro? You want to go? All right, let me grab my gold suit and my red blankie. <laughs> and then we're going to dance. <laughs> and then when you're tired, stab you in the neck. <laughs> Ole. Ole. Last time I was in Spain, it was during the uh, running with the bulls in Pamplona. Pamplona, which sounds like a form of cancer. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a Pamplona. That joke never works, but I always do it. Because who doesn't love a good cancer joke? No, there's the running with the bulls every July. First of all, nobody is running with the bulls, all right? The bulls don't turn into jogging partners. People are voluntarily being chased by bulls because they have mental problems. There's always a couple Americans that run with the bulls, you know, and they interview them the next day in the hospital. <laughs> uh, I was here on vacation. I heard about this run with the bulls, and I haven't worked out in 20 years. <laughs> so I had my wife hold my ham on, and I went out there. <laughs> and I got gored right away. I don't know how you'd even train to run with the bulls. I had my cat chase me for a week. <laughs> Felt like I was ready after that. <laughs> you guys fight the bulls, you run with the bulls. Which seems odd, but of course in America, we ride the bulls for no reason. <laughs> like, I, I, why, I, how bored do you get on a ranch? <laughs> it's like, hey, you wanna play poker again? He, you know that terrifying bull? What if we took turns riding it? <laughs> Why don't we just play poker? <laughs> Last year I performed at a rodeo because I have a really good agent. And uh, <laughs> I performed at a rodeo. And yes, it was my first rodeo. It was, I love that saying, not my first rodeo, as if the second rodeo is when it makes sense. <laughs> oh, now I get it. People are riding animals that want to be left alone. <laughs> First, I thought, wow, this is an aggressive petting zoo. <laughs> I performed after the rodeo so I could watch. It was so impressive. It was truly dangerous what these people were doing. And we live in a risk-averse society. It's not uncommon to see a toddler wearing a helmet. And, you know, but like at the rodeo, there's no safety meeting. There's no one going, all right, fellas, no one wants to see you get hurt. Well, except everyone in the stadium. <laughs> I was watching at one point, and uh, one of the participants came up to me. He goes, you do stand-up comedy? I could never do that. That terrifies me. <laughs> and then I swear to God, he proceeded to climb on a bull. <laughs> and the world never made sense again. <laughs> at the rodeo, there's different events, some of them more dangerous, some different skills, like there's the calf roping where a guy chases down a calf. You know how cows are super fast. Well, this is a baby cow that a grown man chases down while he's riding a horse. So it's a fair race. 
and he lassoes the calf and he jumps off and he ties it up and whoever does it fastest is most likely to be a serial killer. <laughs> but there's nothing that competes with the bull riding. That's the ultimate event at the rodeo where people, these guys ride these bulls for up to eight seconds, which is so impressive and not just because I can't even gargle that long. I'm like, ah, that scope's spicy. You know what I mean? <laughs> But they ride a bull, and, and very rarely do they even get to eight seconds, but when they do, that's their work day, eight seconds. That's gotta change your perspective on things. Like even waiting for an elevator, you're like, I could have ridden three bulls, yeah? <laughs> and eight seconds, it's not that long, especially when you consider like a dead body could ride a bull for like two seconds. <laughs> it's like, you did well, not as good as the corpse, but you know, you did. You did all right. My favorite part of the rodeo was the rodeo clown. I don't know how they convinced someone to do that job. It's like, after the riders thrown by the furious bull, we need someone to distract, maybe antagonize the 2,400 pound animal. And me and the fellas, we were thinking, you'd be good at that. <laughs> me? Would I have protection? Uh, you mean like makeup? <laughs> something to protect me from the bull. Now, you wouldn't be out there naked. You'd be dressed like a clown. <laughs> Why a clown? It would be hysterical. <laughs> For who? Now, we haven't figured everything out yet. <laughs> Why are they dressed like clowns? Do they think a bull's gonna throw a rider and be like, I'm gonna gore everyone in this? <laughs> Is that a clown? <laughs> Is it my birthday? <laughs> did, did you guys get me a clown for my birthday? I didn't even think you guys liked me. Then you go and get me a clown for my birthday. Last year I also performed at a zoo. I don't know what's going on in my career, really. <laughs> I might be working my way up to a dog park. I'm not sure. <laughs> Why'd they pick me for the zoo? Gaffigan show? Do it at the animal jail. Of course, a zoo is not an animal jail. I mean, the animals can't leave, and if they tried to leave, they'd be shot. <laughs> but it's not a jail. I performed at the zoo. Was, uh, the Toledo, Ohio Zoo it was outside. It was a beautiful zoo. I could see some of the animals. I don't know what they were thinking. They are probably like, who's the new guy? <laughs> well, that polar bear really let himself go. <laughs> Because some animals do perform at the zoo and they reward them with food, which is the same arrangement I have. <laughs> That's why I was at the zoo. I don't know. It is strange how humans treat animals. Like sheep, we just take their coats, we shave off their coats, and we dump the sheep back in the field, and the sheep are like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm freezing! <laughs> We gather up all the wool and we leave. When we return, we're just wearing sweaters. <laughs> we don't even acknowledge it. Hey, what's up, dumb sheep? <laughs> cows, thankfully cows have no idea what's going on. They just stand there eating grass. Oh, look at that. Farmer's got a new leather jacket. <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful leather jacket. You know who'd love that jacket is Bessie. Hey, where is Bessie? <laughs> Chickens, we just take their eggs. We don't even tell them, we just take them and leave. That's gotta be a big deal for a hen to lay an egg, right? And they probably wanna tell their friends. They're like, I have an announcement. <laughs> well, you know the rooster, the guy who's really loud in the morning? Well, we've been getting to know each other. And I guess I'll show you. Where are my eggs? <laughs> Who took them? I know it was one of you. It wasn't the farmer. He went in for breakfast. <laughs> I love when people get upset at that joke. <laughs> that is not funny. How dare you bring up a fictitious chicken <laughs> that never existed, losing imaginary eggs. <laughs> this reminds me. I want to have a tortilla española 
<laughs> Hi, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you want. If you want to see more stand up, I have more stand up, or if you want to see an original show like Let's Get Cooking or The Mike and Pat Show, that's available on my channel. But also, just know that I'll be posting a new video every day during this pandemic or until the world ends. Please hit subscribe and turn on your alert or notification button.